Hello and welcome to Let's Learn About the Optical Cross. I know this is something that a lot of you struggle with. It is probably one of the most popular emails that I get. Well, let's see if I can't clear up some of the mysteries and make life a little bit easier for you. One way we're going to do that first is take a moment and learn one of my favorite optical chants, and it is this. The shorter the radius, the steeper the curve. The steeper the curve, the higher the power. The higher the power, the thicker the lens. It'll never let you down and become particularly helpful if you get into contact lenses. So let's review that one more time. The shorter the radius, the steeper the curve, the steeper the curve, the higher the power, the higher the power, the thicker the lens. Put that up there and make sure you keep it there. If I took these numbers and I pushed you a little bit, I said, what is that 5? What is that 2? What is that 7? You may come up with all kinds of answers. You may say power, you may say sphere, you may say cylinder, you may say diopter. You'd be right on all of those things, sort of. What those really are, are curves on a lens. The power that we get from a lens comes from the curves that are ground onto it. Those curves are what we're trying to draw on an optical cross. And the reason that gets a little confusing is because the optical cross is flat, it's one-dimensional, and the cross is about power, not about prescription. And we'll talk about that when we get to the whiteboard. But for now, just keep in mind that we're looking at the two principal powers on the lens, which can always be found by doing flat transposition. And we're talking about the two principal meridians that are 90 degrees apart from each other. And that's all we're worried about when we're talking about the optical cross. So let's take a really close look at this lens and see if we can't help you visualize what it is that we're doing when we head to the whiteboard and start trying to draw out a cross. Now let's take a real close look at this lens and see if I can't help you visualize some of those things that we just talked about. I've taken this lens and I've divided it into two bands, a green band and a red band. For the sake of this project, we're going to say that this lens is a minus 5, minus 2, and we're going to put an axis of 45 on it, but that's not really going to be important until a little bit later when we hit the whiteboard. If I do flat transposition, I would have a minus 7, plus 2, at 135. If I take this lens and I look at my red band, in this case, my red band would represent my minus 7. It would be the most powerful point on the lens anywhere. It would have my thickest edge. It would have my steepest curve. And that curve would have been created by a tool when the lens was ground with a very short radius. 90 degrees away from my red, I have my green band. In this case, my green band would represent my minus 5. It would represent the thinnest point on this lens. It would represent the shallowest curve anywhere on this lens. And that would have been created by a tool with a slightly longer radius than my 7. The little black mark that you see is an indication that these two points are 90 degrees away from each other. And you'll see that in some other places, that's why I put that on there. Between my red and my green, this lens will always be going from 7 down to 5, or from 5 up to 7 in power. All of the points between here have different powers, and we'll learn how to calculate those in upcoming lessons. What we're concerned with here on the optical cross, however, are only these two principal meridians, strongest powers, and the two that are 90 degrees apart from each other. 
So let's take this lens and literally put it on the whiteboard and then draw out our two principal meridians from these points and see if we can't make it a little bit clearer. Now we're here at the whiteboard, which is a good thing. This is where the really good stuff happens. But before we start jumping right into that, we've got some housekeeping to take care of first. I'm just going to talk for a few. Bear with me. Um, I think you'll find that it's worthwhile. Number one is, in case you haven't noticed, this is the first in what we hope is a very long series of video presentations. We are trying so hard to deliver you a quality product, and I hope you can begin to see the foundation that we're building with these videos. Uh, Keith's doing a whole lot of background work on editing. I'm putting in endless hours of just shooting material and editing and trying to get it just the very best that we can. But it's still the first one, so bear with us. We're learning together. Number two says the why. I could teach you to take the powers off of your basic flat transposition and put them on a cross probably in five minutes, 10 minutes tops, 10 examples. So what? So you could pass your ABO? I don't care. So what? What matters is understanding what it is you're doing and why it is you're doing it. That's what's going to make you a great optician not passing a test, not getting some kind of certification, not being able to fill in the blanks or answer a multiple choice question. Understanding what you're doing is everything. That's why this may seem painfully slow to you, why we're doing little kind of baby steps and building from optical cross to 30, 45, 60, to powers and oblique meridians formula. And only then are we gonna start tackling the most basic prism problems because without those preliminary pieces, the foundation work, the other stuff isn't really going to make any sense either. So bear with me. If you're miles ahead, you've already said, I got it, I got it. Why does he shut up and move on? Then just jump ahead and start the next video. This is for all those people that need the steps to build on to become the very best optician they can be. So same as number one, questions, anything, just you let me know. Number three, flat transposition and the calculator. I'm not going to do flat transposition here. There are a ton of examples on the Optician Works website. Just go there. There are practice questions. I think there are at least 15 of them. Learn that first and then come back here if you're not ready. With flat transposition, with a lot of the material that's coming up, use a calculator. Guys, you're going to see me standing up here stuttering, looking, trying to add whole numbers in my head. Math, me, not good. I use a calculator. The plus minus sign is going to be your best friend. Use a calculator for the simplest things, even adding and subtracting your 90 when you're doing your flat transposition. As I like to say, don't say I didn't warn you. We are going to do three examples of taking the power from the lens, the things that we were just talking about and looking at, and putting them onto the cross, keeping in mind that we're talking about power, not prescription. And they're both P words, and I have a tendency to mix them up, and I'll use them wrong sometimes, but remember, it's power, not prescription. Only after we have that down can we go to number five. And we're going to do three examples of taking a prescription off of the cross. Yep, that one means you got you to think a little bit. So we'll have a little bit of work there. Uh, this, everything's right there in front of you. Flat transposition, nothing much to it. This takes some thought. Once we've gone through those five things, the last thing, number six, I am going to do a really brief review of the number line, which is the same as the lens meter drum wheel. In case some of you are still struggling with number five, after we're through with that, we'll just talk about where sign and direction comes from. 
That's our housekeeping for today. Thanks for listening. And now we are going to hit our first example on the whiteboard. So let's do that. All right, here we are, example number one. And we are going to use that same very lens that we just were working with a few moments ago over on the bench. Let's take a really quick moment and sidestep. And remember, I said that we were going to, uh, I, I assigned a random or arbitrary axis and it didn't matter on the bench. Well, now it matters because now I have to assign my axis in order to find the place to put it onto an optical cross. This is an optical cross. Flat transposition. At 45 degrees, I have minus five. There's no questions, it's right there for you. You can just draw the arrow, There's no question. Do flat transposition, it tells us at 135, we've got minus seven. When viewing a lens, when looking at it as if someone is wearing it, your degrees run from 180 to zero. So taking this lens, the very lens that we were just talking about, red, thickest, minus seven, green, minus five. Halfway between zero and 90 is 45 degrees. Halfway between 90 and 180 is 135 degrees. Remember that little box, the little black box that I put in there? My 90 degree, well, there it is again. And, and I can take my minus seven and place it at 135 degrees, just like that. This is what you're doing. This is the entire concept. This is the optical cross. I am trying to draw the two principal powers, two principal meridians on a graph representation of it. And this is perfect. Between 0 and 90 is 45. At 45 I've got my minus 5. My minus 7 at 135. I've marked them and now I can simply fill it in. Minus 5 at 45 degrees. Minus 7 at 135 degrees. That is taking the powers as given in a prescription, doing flat transposition, and taking those two primary powers and putting them onto a cross. That's example one. Let's do another one. All right, example number two. I have my script up here. I've done my flat transposition already. What I need is already in front of me. At 30 degrees, I've got minus 650. At 120 degrees, I have minus 750. If I take a lens similar to that one that we were just looking at, and I examine it, my blue band, I have my thickest edge, which is gonna be my strongest power, steepest curve, which would be my 750 at 120. 90 degrees away, I have my thinnest point on the lens, and that would be my 650. So, like, look at my cross, uh, 30, it's going to be around here. My 120 then be somewhere in this neighborhood. Draw that down, and that out, and I can even mark that. 120, mark that, 30, and if I take my lens, my 750 at 120, my 750 is my blue band, and I line that up just like so, that's what I'm trying to draw out. This is the critical piece. This is exactly what I am trying to convey through this drawing. At 30 degrees, I have got minus 650, and at 120 degrees, I've got minus 750. And those correspond with the strongest point, weakest point on my lens, literally drawing it out from those curves, from the thinnest point and thickest point. That would be example number two. 
Example number three, switched from minus power to plus power. Doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Power is power. At 10 degrees, I've got plus four. At 100 degrees, I've got plus 250. 10 degrees is gonna be just off of my zero, about here. And my 100 is gonna be just past my 90 here. At 10 degrees, I have plus four. And at 100 degrees, I have plus 250. 100. I really hate to say easy, nothing to it, simple. Those are not words that I, I use very often. But unlike what we're about to do next, everything you need to draw this out is right there in front of you. If you can do flat transposition, you can take powers and put them on the cross. Taking something off the cross and writing a script from it, that is a little bit more complex. So let's do three examples of that, and then I'll do that quick number line review, and we will be wrapping up the optical cross. Example one of removing a prescription from an optical cross. Not uncommon at all. Um, this would be something I'd put up on the board before class started, for instance, and I'd ask you to solve this before we even began. So how would we go about doing that? As is always the case, let's start with what we know. We know we have minus eight at 80 degrees. And we know we have minus six at 170 degrees. It's right there in front of us. There's no mystery involved. It's right there. So what does that leave us? That leaves us two holes that we need to fill in. Our cylinder value. Our cylinder value and our cylinder sign. Where do those come from? Our cylinder value, just like the lensometer wheel, is the distance we're gonna travel from six to eight and from eight to six. If I'm at minus eight and I go eight, seven, six, I am moving two diopters. If I go from six, seven, eight, I'm moving two diopters. If I go from minus eight to minus six, I am moving in the plus direction. If I go from six to eight, I am going in a more minus, I am in a minus direction. That is how I take the powers on an optical cross and rewrite them as a script. What you're solving for is your cylinder amount and your cylinder sign. Your amount is the difference between these two. Your sign is the direction you're traveling up or down the number line in relationship to those two numbers. Example one. All right, example two, another day has passed, class is starting again, you come into the classroom, this is on the board, and I say, hey, give me the script for this, and then we can move on. What are you going to do? You're gonna do the same thing we did last time. You're gonna write down what you got. You've got plus three at 65 degrees, we know that. We've got plus, 125 at 155 degrees. We need to solve for our cylinder amount and our cylinder sign. If I go from 125 to three, I've moved one and three quarter diopters, 1.75, 1.75. 
seven, five. If I go from three to 125, move to 1.75. If I go from three to 125, I am moving in a minus direction. If I go from 125 to three, I have gone in a plus direction. I've added to that amount 175. Removing primary powers and writing them as a script. Cylinder value, cylinder value, direction, or sign. Example number three. These days are just flying by, aren't they? It's now Wednesday and we're back in the classroom again and we have this on the board and now you are getting the hang of this and you're gonna knock this out in no time because I said take this off of the optical cross and write the script from it and you are just gonna go to work and you're gonna say, I know I've got 450 at 33 degrees. I know I've got minus 550 at 123 degrees. And I need to solve for this and this. If I go from 450 to 550, I'm just going one diopter. Go from 550 to 5, one diopter. If I go from 550 to 450, I'm going plus. If I'm going 450 to 550, I'm going in a minus direction. Ba -dum -ba. Taking principal meridians, principal powers off of the cross, writing it as a script, three examples. Really brief review of the number line coming up, and then we can move on and we're gonna start doing the 30, 45, 60 rule. If I gave you this, optical cross and I told you that at 90 degrees we have minus 4 and at 180 degrees, 90 degrees away we have minus 7 and you were solving for a script, you wanted to figure out your cylinder value, you're going to count the distance between those two points. 4, 5, 6, 7. I've got three diopters of cylinder, the amount of power between the two principal meridians. Lens meter drum, number line. If I'm at minus four and I go to minus seven, one, two, three diopters, I'm moving in a more minus direction. Minus seven is more minus than minus four is. It is further away from plus. So my sign for the four to the seven would be the minus three. If I'm at seven and I go two, four, one, two, three, I've got my three again, but I'm heading in the plus direction. I'm heading into the plus side of the, the drum. I'm still in the minus numbers, but I'm heading up in that direction. So from my seven to four, I would have a plus three. That is where the sign comes from when you're deciding how to address the, the cylinder value and direction and sign. If you struggle with that, it may help you to have either a printout of the lens meter drum or a number line like this. I, I sometimes worry that this would confuse someone even more. I, it may also help somebody. So if you needed that, I hope that helps. If not, um, well, that's okay too. That's it. Optical Cross is done. We are out of here, and I will see you next time when we start 30, 45, 60.